Hey everybody, it's Texas Stroke here, Lance's Performer Shop, Lone Star, Mopar.com. It is Sunday night, July 28th, 93 still. I actually hear thunder in the distance, which is bizarre. Hadn't rained here in a very long time. That said, it's going to get hotter through the week. I'm talking like 105 or so by midweek. So, trying to get as much of this done as I can here tonight. And uh, this one is going to be a combination of things. I've got a couple of items that have been back ordered for a long time. They're sort of coming in like one by one. So I'm just sticking them in with things. And that's what we're going to do here. But, small box. But uh, definitely one I think some of you will find interesting. Now, for the longest time, we had that Vera Spring Flyer. Brace yourselves, it's a new one. <laughs> and uh, this one is valid July 1st to September 30th. The stainless steel screwdrivers, I brought in that insulated one. It is really, really nice. If you were in the market, that's a huge pickup. Uh, they're also pushing some stainless steel hex plus keys. Uh, the James Bond screwdrivers, part of their promotion this time around. The Craftform Compact. I've been really interested in those, to be honest with you. Uh, they've got the bicycle set, the bottle opener. This little thing here is actually not a bad deal, particularly if you've never brought in any Vera drivers and you're wanting to get a good sampling of all of them. That's a very solid purchase. Uh, kind of a novelty, but with a lot of utility. Uh, it's sort of like a uh, beverage tray with some coasters, a bottle opener, and then a quite a good selection of drivers <laughs> so it is so nice after seeing that same spring flyer uh, virtually littered all over the shop this one right here with the easter egg it's nice to kind of see them step out i guess with it being summer they're thinking you're going to be doing boating and need stainless tools <laughs> so that is a highlight uh it's probably the only time we'll take a look at that and then i'll just start complaining about it i'm sure with my future orders until we move into october and i guess get a new one it's, uh, right here we get a bit of thanks and if we flip it around here this is number 13 of 24 it is a t20 that'll come in handy for me 25 millimeter torx titanium coated insert bit from viha their standalone part number 71565 may have already had that one i'm honestly not sure it's getting hard to uh, keep track on it and i realize now the error of my ways if you're looking down in the box that i had to let go of you can see one of the items and I guess we'll get started with it because, truth be told, it is the back-ordered item that we're going to just toss in with this one. Could have done it in the last one with the Jokers, but I wanted to keep that specific to the Vera Jokers. So, what we have here, this is uh, from Hazette. This is their part number 810, PH2. Uh, standard price can be just shy of 15 You can catch it on sale at KC Tool for $12.58. This is one that I requested they add to the site uh, because I didn't want to buy a full set of these just to get the number two. Because uh, unlike some Philo or Viha stuff where it's like, man, you know, $12 for a screwdriver or, you know, $25 for a set, you'd be crazy not to do that. Well, this is one of those deals where it's like $15 for the driver or, you know, an exorbitantly high price for the set. And you sort of have to make a judgment call there. And that's what I did. And they were nice enough to add it. Uh, bring one in and here it is in front of you so this is sort of a kind of a base level driver again if you're unaware do I need any more screwdrivers technically no <laughs> but uh, we're going all in I'm gonna showcase all the handle styles we're gonna do a comparison I'll tell you what I like better and why across each brand then cumulatively across the scope of things it's gonna be pretty comprehensive I felt like we were so close to pulling that off we just as well go for it and this is kind of, I guess, one of their lower level drivers. It actually feels pretty good. This is my first time having it out of the bag. Uh, it feels pretty good in hand. Now, will it hold up? Will it maintain that? I don't know. But on the blade, you can actually see 810-PH2, which is the part number. You can use that to pull it up. And the tip itself, nothing fancy. It's just black painted. It's actually kind of got some of the coating coming off as well. There we go. Full frame there for you. But I felt it was, again, worth bringing in. And again, I think I've got all my bases covered for Hazette. So that's kind of a cool uh, <laughs> acquisition. Now, moving on to what actually came in this box. It was not back ordered. We'll just continue on with that trend. This is a little thing that I'd seen for a long time. And I always balked at it because of the price. And then when I started bringing in some Hazette stuff, I've been very impressed by it, starting with that dorky magnetic tray, which is actually super useful. And this is one of those deals, what finally sold me on it was 
something that's probably going to sound really lame when I tell you. Uh, but this is Hazette's part number 805C-25. You can probably see it there in the bag. Uh, list 2360, you can pick it up for around 2006. I think I got it slightly less than that. Uh, must have been some promotion or something. But what is it? Well, it's one of those pocket drivers. Now, if you're thinking, hey, you know, my dad used to have one of those, or grandpa always had one in his overalls. Well, you kind of need two, typically. You want, you know, flat uh, and a Phillips. Now, uh, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. Number one, this feels really good in hand. Uh, number two, that would come in quite handy from time to time, particularly if you're doing anything with this tip size. But the main thing, and it's got the part number, 805C25, it's got a cool color scheme, it's going to be high vis if you drop it. This is the dorky part of the feature that uh, some of you will find absolutely ridiculous and others of you will be like me and say, oh, that's so cool, i, I got to pick that up. Now, while I will use the screwdriver in, what really intrigued me is the cap. And you're thinking like, okay, we'll take it off, you know, and, and put it down there so it doesn't stab you. Is that what you're talking about? It doesn't seem to want to come off. What are you, what are you referencing, man? It's not that it's a pocket clip, which is getting harder to find. And this is actually the uh, metal clipped drivers. I hate those because they always wind up tearing your pocket. They don't do it initially, but over time they just wear it thin. And then it starts to unravel your shirt, which is really a sad way for a shirt to go. But the cap doesn't come off, it doesn't cover the tip, nothing like that. This is actually used as a scraper. It's used to remove labels. And I gotta tell you, as dumb as that sounds, if you're someone like me that has to do that several times throughout the course of a day, it's kind of going to be a nice feature, and again, this will fit real nice in my shirt pocket or more likely where I keep everything else in my front jean pocket. And I honestly think I'm going to use the uh, <laughs> scraper clip more than the driver's side. Now, certain times, you know, like if I was doing maintenance on a machine, this would come in handy, but it's going to be rare that I would use anything that small. That might be too big for, like, uh, safety glasses, too. But... Regardless, I think that's going to come in freaking handy. <laughs> and, uh, again, let me know. Is this something you would be willing to try, or does it seem just incredibly stupid to you, or are you like me and you're like, you know what, I'm going to buy one of those next time I order? Because that was my logic, and ultimately that's what I did. So <laughs> there it is. Again, I'm, it's one of those things I'm dorkily excited about. But hey, uh, what can we really do now? Here recently, we took a look at our very first ever Heiko items. I kind of had that, uh, which has turned out to be useful like I thought it would be. Not necessarily utilitarian, like, hey, look at me wrenching with this keychain wrench. It's like, what size is that? And I can reference it easily. Uh, that's exactly what I want. I still want to bring in the metric set of that, which has been out of stock every time I order. And uh, if you were wondering, no, that's not what I have in my hand. What I have in my hand is way bigger. And if you look recall the max line wrench I brought in from them that 10 millimeter I told you I really liked it I love it that thing is currently shut up in the trunk of the uh, Challenger because I'm constantly having to take the battery terminal on and off and it's 10 millimeter uh, and that's why up front with the uh, overflow bottle I'm messing with I'm using the ratcheting wrenches the max line has been fantastic and it is why I opted to do this in fact I'm just gonna I'm gonna give you the part number HY three five zero three two three six any inclination what that might be okay I'll tell you right now you can get it sixty eight seventy six on sale around fifty nine dollars and KC tools said that it was made in Ireland I can't imagine that being a typo but I've also never known of I guess really anything being manufactured in Ireland you know, outside of this I don't mean that disrespectfully like it's just I can't think of anything and uh, it said it was made in Ireland. Now the wrench itself says Germany, and yes, it is a wrench. And if I bring her down here, you're looking at chrome vanadium, 3632, the part number, right? And it's from Heiko. It's got Germany here. I'm inclined to say maybe it is made in Germany since it is stamped as such. Uh, but again, the website did say Ireland. So if anyone has any insights, feel free to let me know. But this sucker right here. That is a wrench. That looks like something that would be on a trophy welded up, you know, like for a car show or a street roll race type of a, you know, club trophy someone put together. 
32 millimeter open end, 36 millimeter open end. Did I have a 32 or a 36 open end or box end or combination? Absolutely not. Uh, SAE, I don't even know if I have anything that large. I think I stop around like an uh, inch and a half or something. But why did I bring this in? Why would I have brought in that big of a wrench? You know, it's just you just getting to the point of collecting stupid stuff. No. On the truck, the fan clutch, which it's this is I guess kind of right before the borderline where we went from viscous fans to electric fans. It's 2001. The truck is sporting a fan drive and it is a 36 millimeter hex and that thing is going to be a pain in the butt to get off. It had never been off is how I know it's going to be a pain. That's a whole lot of time that it's been on there and spinning backwards. <laughs> so that's exactly what I'm going to use this for. Now the cool thing is I've already played with this. Since it is, you know, it would have been fine if it was boxed, but, you know, getting it this way, if I ever need a 32, that's fine as well. And some fan drives are 32 millimeter, but this is such a big open end that almost serves as like a box, and it's kind of comfortable uh, from this side. If I need to get really high leverage or something, I don't have pipe that large, so I'd probably just tape it and uh, kind of go about it in that manner, try a strap wrench. But that's what it's going to be used for, It's <laughs> for a fan hex. And uh, I'm thinking it's going to get the job done, so that will uh, be money well spent because it'll save me more than that over the course of time. But uh, I was so impressed again by that Max line. This is what I went for. I was pulling up 36 millimeter wrench options, and I saw this, and I thought, hey, you know, that's really a. It was super well good price for what it is. You got to realize, you know, even at that price point. A lot of stuff, Stavilla, Hazette, you would be spending a crud ton of money. Same thing, Mac, Snap-on, the Mac, uh, which I did look at all my options before deciding to go this route. Like the Mac fan clutch stuff, which was made in China, I think it was like 119 bucks or something ridiculous. So this is a steal, and it's going to be a really nice wrench to have, and it gives me a bonus size of 32 so i thought it was a win <laughs> so i'll report back to you on how it goes i'll probably probably make a video on it i don't know it just depends on how my time is going now this next setup is kind of a two-fold item and this is something i'm pretty excited about it's not anything i'm going to use here at the house i'm actually going to take this to work uh should get reimbursed by the boss man uh, for bringing it in and i should be have my praises sung by everyone uh for finally finding something that will work for this and as much as I'd like to take all the credit for it I can't uh, but this actually ties in with a previous video if you recall I made a video one of our tool hauls I highlighted like $90 door scissors those were purchased specifically to cut discharge hose at work and uh, again we use everything from like 2 inch up through 10 inch uh, actually some smaller stuff too but kind of a lay flat deal and long story short that stuff is hard to cut it's annoying and what I use that actually works really well is a fillet knife it's what we've always done I've talked to the manufacturer people that stock it other people that make similar products and when I say I'm using a fillet knife and I'm looking for sympathy they're like oh that's pretty smart we just use a box cutter and I will tell you right now when you've got a lay flat hose thrown out it would basically run from this wrench to the edge of my table it's hard to cut that straight with a fillet knife let alone a box cutter uh, it's kind of got like reinforced fiber scattered throughout it, and it's, it's just a nightmare. Uh, so what I had done, you know, I said, hey, KC Tool, what do you have that can do this? And they recommended the scissors, innocently enough. The scissors have been really good, but there's no way they can cut that hose. <laughs> and, uh, not wanting to just blindly say, well, hey, those didn't work, what can you do? Uh, what I told them I would do is actually send in a sample of the hose and let them mess with it, throw their gauntlet of German tools at it, and say, hey nine out of these ten work pick one or nothing cuts it or only this cut it and they found i think a couple of things that would technically cut it but only one of them cut it really well and that one item as you might have expected is from knipex <laughs> and uh, this is probably something no one has brought in or made a video on because i can't think of a many people that would need it on an individual level possibly at work and i imagine this would work well for a multitude of things but this is their part number nine four five five two hundred it is an anvil shear this is kind of what when i first emailed and i was like man if they're just like some shears or something i was picturing something kind of like a miter saw you know with like a deck on it and then just a blade that would just lop down and somehow cut it and before anyone asks um 
I don't even know what they would be called, but you know, like when you were a kid in school and there was that paper cutter, you know, it was like the grid lines with all the measurements and then they would just cut construction paper. I was thinking of something like that, just as more of like a handheld. And uh, I did years ago, we had one that was super, super dull. And I wanted to see, I thought, I bet that would cut the hose. <laughs> it didn't. And I don't think even with a sharp blade it would have cut it. But before we got rid of it and scrapped it out, I did try it. Uh, but this box will hopefully, and I should find out as early as tomorrow at work, uh, tell us what we need to know. Again, it's so strange. These boxes have like a really nice recycled feel to them. Uh, when I've gotten boxes like this from Amazon, they've always looked like they were water damaged. This one just seems natural. But this is it. This innocent little guy could possibly make the life of mine and whoever is tasked with cutting the hose, if I'm not doing it, significantly easier. And uh, I realize a lot of you are not excited about this. This is like a game changer <laughs> for me personally. Uh, and I should mention, when you cut the hose, you're down on your hands and knees on a filthy shop floor. Even when it looks clean, it's filthy, and you know that when the hose picks it all up and you have to spend time dusting it off before you can even tape it or tie it down. But, made in Germany, right there. Spin this sucker around. Got your little lock mechanism. And what this is, it does adjust. You can thread that screw down. All you gotta do is kinda kick it out to the side or catch it in on that ledge. This will spring open. And basically what we have, we've got our flat, sort of just, you know, stamped cast piece here. Which it does look like that would be serviceable as well. I think if we ever wore that down somehow, I think it could probably be a replacement part. I can consult the catalog, but more than likely I'll just ask Colin at KC Tool, because that sounds easier. But right here, this is the blade. And again, this is kind of where the shears would come in. In this case, we've got the blade on the bottom side, Pac-Man action going through whatever we want to cut. Or more than likely, and cutting hose, I would have this flat side on the bottom, the blade up top, and I would just go to town. And as you can imagine, if I was tasked with going from the edge of the table to the center of the Y in Heiko, I can do that a little bit easier with this than a fillet knife. Uh, being hose, of course, it's not going to be one-sided. There's two layers, which further complicates getting a smooth cut. <laughs> and uh, Again, I can't tell you how excited I am to use these things. This is the main reason I came out here tonight. I got the box in, I think, Friday, and I haven't been able to do anything in the shop this weekend. It was super busy. I uh, came out tonight, and I was like, I'm opening this up. I'm getting caught up on videos, and I'm taking that thing to work tomorrow. And what's going to go with it is right here, part number 94. Come on. Come on. Five, yeah. Five, nine, two hundred, zero, one. All this is is a replacement blade. Uh, so let me figure out. Oh, it slides. Cool. It's like Sandvik. Gotta be careful, it's very hard with that there. But yeah, I was like, man, how does this swivel swivel hinge open? It doesn't, it's like a you know a cutting tool. Uh, I say cutting tool, I mean like Sandvik, you know, boring bars, things of that nature. But that's it, this is the replacement blade, so I should be geared up. I went ahead in good faith and opt for the uh, replacement blade. And I can tell you right now, if this does what it should do, which they tested it for me, they sent video to prove it. And uh, I am super stoked about this. In fact, I need to get in before it starts raining on my brand new tool. Uh, but that is that, man. That is all I brought in. This is the main reason for the purchase. I was kind of waiting for it to come in stock with the blade. They had one coming for me. And so I was waiting on that. And then, uh, like I said, I needed this. This guy happened to be in stock. And then again, the uh, big Hazet screwdriver was back order from another one. But... I'm excited. I'm super excited to try that thing. Uh, and I'm, to be fair, with this Heiko wrench, this is not the max line by any stretch of the imagination. That is super nice. Uh, but this is just for a giant open end wrench. I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, the Heiko stuff that I brought in, which has been relatively limited, but it's been really, really good quality and it's like fractions of the price of the other brands. So. Uh, it's one of those things, got to gotta take it with a grain of salt. Now, is there anything that we could just shear off here? And I guess the cardboard's not a great testament, but we're going to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to tear this real quick. And let's see how these handle it. So I've got the blunt down there, the blunt side, and we've got our razor edge here. So we'll just start with a baby cut. Okay, maybe we need filler material. There we go. 
Now we're getting the hang of it. Okay, so you just got to, the trick is you've got to kind of press down and get a full cut. Um, can it cut paper? Let's find out. I'm going to come in right here. Yeah, it does. So the main thing, I could care less if we can cut cardboard. I could care less how it does with paper. I'm cutting something thick with it, which I think will kind of be easier to articulate, as weird as that sounds. Super excited. Apparently, I guess it's really going to storm here. So uh, there goes my early shower and getting caught up on sleep. But hey, it's going to be worth it. I'm going to get this sucker into the house before this box does get wet, but uh, I will keep you posted how this goes. That might turn out being a video. It might not. Depends how much free time I have. These suckers right here, though, big thanks to KC Tool for uh, letting me send them some scrap pieces of hose and putting them to extra paces to find something. Because apparently, from what I understand, they tried a lot of different things and none of it would work. <laughs> so... Uh, it's pretty exciting to find something that does, but uh, yeah. On that note, if you have used any of these items, if you've actually used anything similar to this, a shear from a different brand, different manufacturer, what were you using it for? How did it work? Was it a lifesaver for you? Uh, if you've got any big open-end wrenches, how have they held up for you? Again, let me know. You think this is dorky or super useful? And then as I mentioned, I believe that was the last piece I needed to acquire the Hazette lineup of driver styles, if you will. So. That one should be coming pretty soon. I think we'll do Sta Villa, then maybe Jador, then maybe Hazette. I'm kind of just trying. Let's face it, Vera and Viha, we've got a crud ton of driver styles. But uh, Hazette, Jadora, you know, not so bad. Uh, there's not many options you have to contend with, so it's a little bit more affordable in terms of trying everything. But with that said, I will quit rambling. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. If you have not subscribed, I encourage you to do so. Should have a video every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Texas time, Central Standard. Uh, if not, it should be coming somewhere around then. If time allows, there might be stuff midweek, like on a Viha Wednesday, something along those lines. But uh, if you're subscribed and you ring the bell and you jump through all the other hoops and land your uh, 68 Charger on the flip side of the creek, maybe, just maybe, they'll give you notice. If not, again, every Saturday morning should have something new for you. But uh, we are... Uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. You can also find us on LoneStarMopars.com. With that said, I'm going to quit rambling, get in the house. I'm going to use that tomorrow, and I cannot wait. So I'll try to remember uh, next time I do get to use it to take some pictures. I don't want to post them and spoil it, so I have to wait for this video to be posted, and then hopefully I'll remember to post the pictures. But if it does what it seemed to do in the video they sent me, Oh, it's going to be a great acquisition for work. And like I said, I shall, I shall emerge a hero triumphantly and everyone shall applaud and thank me for bringing in something that makes our lives significantly easier. But uh, once again, big thanks to Casey Tool for helping out on those shears, uh, trying the hose out. And with that said, I will catch you back here for yet another Casey Tool haul.